Route, this is an excellent exercise for people if they're predisposed to panic disorder or anxiety. And it's also a great exercise to help improve blood flow to the brain. It's very gentle. And I like it with panic disorder because it's a very controlled dose of air hunger. And it helps the person to cope better with the feeling of suffocation, which often drives their fear and can feed into their panic. So the exercise goes as follows. You take a normal breath in through your nose, out through your nose, pinch your nose and hold, and you're walking about five or six paces. And then you stop and you let go and you breathe in through your nose. And you're just breathing normally now for about half a minute to a minute. So just with normal breathing. So, and then after about a half a minute, take a normal breath in through your nose, out through your nose, pinch your nose and hold, and you're walking small distance. It's only about five or six paces, maybe seven paces. Then you let go, breathe in through your nose. And the distance, it should be comfortable that you feel kind of that air hunger, but you're not feeling any stress. And the other thing about this is that you can then increase it according to how you feel about it. So after about a half a minute to a minute's rest, what we will do, we will increase it. And this time what I will have you do is walk over to this point, but then about halfway back. So we're just increasing the distance because I would like you to gauge the feeling and the buildup of air hunger and your reaction to it and to go as far as you feel comfortable. Now, of course, with practice over a period of time, for people with anxiety and panic disorder, this can be improved. So I know I'm never concerned with how people do in the first day. It's kind of normal that if they have a strong reaction to air hunger, that they will only do a small number of paces. In other words, they hold their breath for a short period of time while walking. But the benefit of this is that we have identified something that is feeding into their symptoms. So whenever you're ready, take a normal breath in through your nose and out through your nose and pinch your nose and hold. And you're walking and now turning around and walking about halfway and then stopping and then just breathing in and out through your nose and you're just breathing normally then. So by incrementally increasing the length or the distance that you're holding your breath for, you get some feedback of your body's reaction to air hunger. So we will wait for about a half a minute or so and then we will do it again. With panic disorder and with people with anxiety, we have to be very careful of the degree of air hunger that we give them. I've made mistakes with this in the past. I've put people into too much of air hunger and what it did was it initiated a fear response. So we don't, we don't want to do that. We want to gently work with the air hunger to play with it and to gauge it every time that we're doing it. Whenever you're ready, take a normal breath in through your nose, out through your nose, pinch your nose and hold. And I'll have you walk all the way back and then to stop at that point there and just have normal breathing for about a half a minute or so. Now, the next time that we do it, I'm gonna have you walk all the way over and all the way back. So again, we've increased it a little bit. So normally we do it kind of two easy ones and then we do two, two more that are a little bit stronger, two more that are a little bit stronger and just bring the person up to where they're comfortable that they feel there's a little bit of a challenge, but they're entirely comfortable with it. So that's the, that's the objective. So whenever you're ready, take a normal breath in through your nose, out through your nose, pinch your nose and hold. And then you're walking all the way back to that point and you're letting go, you're breathing in through your nose and then you're having just normal breathing. Now, even in between the recovery, you could have your hands either side of your lower ribs. And that as you're breathing in, your ribs are gently moving out. And as you breathe out, your ribs are gently moving in. So that could be helpful for people who feel comfortable about focusing on their breathing. This also is a good exercise because you don't have to have your attention on your breathing to actually make progress with breathing. With this exercise, all you have to think about is, and we'll do it again, take a normal breath in through your nose, out through your nose, pinch your nose and hold. And you're holding your breath. So you don't have to think about your breathing. At the same time, as you hold your breath, carbon dioxide increases in the blood, you let go, you breathe in through your nose. And as carbon dioxide is increasing during the breath hold, as carbon dioxide increases in the blood, it helps to increase blood flow and oxygen delivery in the brain. And this has a calming effect on the central nervous system. So there's quite a bit going on with this very gentle breath hold. So what we will do is wait for about a half a minute and I will increase it one more time. And normally that's as far as we go when people are predisposed to panic disorder and anxiety. We have them do it gently and then over time when they feel comfortable with it, then they can build it up to whatever they desire. So let's go again, take a normal breath in through the nose, out through the nose, pinch the nose and hold. Walk to this point 
and then back to that point. And now what I would like you to do is to walk all the way back to this point again. And then to let go, but to breathe in through your nose. And you can feel there's a little bit of a challenge there. And that's what we want. Get your breathing just back into recovery. We wait about a half a minute to a minute and then we will do it again. And that exercise also can help to decongest the nose, even though the length of breath hold isn't that long. At the same time, it can be sufficient for people who have nasal congestion because if one is predisposed to panic disorder, we have to be careful doing the traditional nose and blocking exercise. But if the nose is blocked and stuffy, it causes mouth breathing, which is going to increase sympathetic driver stress response. So it's very important for people who are predisposed to anxiety and panic disorder to breathe nose, to breathe light, to breathe slow, to breathe low. So last one, take a normal breath in through your nose, out through your nose, pinch your nose and hold, and you're walking up. And now back to that point again. And then back to where you started. And then to let go, and just to get your breathing under control. And that's pretty much it. That's the small paces exercise. So a number of different benefits to it. You could be practicing that three or four reps, three to four times per day. And it gently desensitizes your reaction to air hunger while at the same time helping to increase circulation and oxygen delivery. That's that.